Welcome to a very special episode of In the Labs with Tim Sway. I am Tim Sway and this is my lab and this one is near and dear to my heart. Now, for the past seven years on my personal YouTube channel, which is just my name, I've put out a video around this time of year that I call Boycott Black Friday. And the idea is to encourage people to make gifts from the heart rather than just buy whatever junk du jour the stores are pushing down our throats those years. Uh, this year I'm doing this project in conjunction with Vectric, so this is a two video series and the other half is on my personal YouTube channel and I invite you to go check that out. I'll tell you more about it later. But let's talk about what's happening on this in the labs. Um, in the previous in the labs, I've focused on some of the 3D capabilities of Aspire. But what I wanted to do here is I wanted to make a project that was accessible to everyone at every level. So I created these uh, snowflake vectors in Cut 2D, which is like the entry level version of Aspire's uh, cutting software. And I made them a couple different ways and I cut them out on a couple different ways and a couple different machines. So they're designed to be like coasters and or ornaments. They could be both. Um, they're just sort of a simple non-denominational uh, project that I came up with. But what's super special about this is that you can make these even if you are not a Vectric software user. If you would like to make this project, you simply go to Vectric.com and you download any of those three trial versions of the software, Cut2D, vcarve or aspire and you will be able to create an account and open up these files and cut them you won't be able to edit them but you'll be able to cut them and you'll also be able to experience the software and learn about that and and see what it's all about while you're at it so this is truly a project that anybody can make and uh with a cnc machine and i'm excited that vectric was willing to play along with me and if you don't have a cnc machine and you want to make this that's what you got to go to my other channel for okay so without further ado Oddly, my wife and I had similar childhood memories of Christmas dinners when we were sort of overstimulated and tired and the adults were all talking and we were bored and we both remembered like playing with the holiday coasters that were on the table. And that got me to thinking about making a coaster that was sort of almost designed for play, which made me think about making shapes that sort of interlocked and then I was like, well, what if they are just these more abstract shapes, which brought me right to snowflakes. Um, so I just went and I downloaded some free vectors of some different snowflake files and started to experiment with how we could cut them out in different patterns. So either they were circles that had holes that were maybe kind of fun to like look through and, and mess around with, or if they had the rough edges that were all the jagged shapes that you could kind of play with. I ended up with three basic designs, and you can see all I did was import these pictures I found online. I used the automatic convert to vectors tool, and they were all ready to go. So the first set I'm doing here, I made circular like a typical coaster, and I cut out the snowflake patterns. You can see I'm running a tool path for the inside of the vectors on the snowflake shapes and the outside of the vector for the coaster size. And I used a very small 1 16th inch router bit and I am using I think it was eighth inch material for these so it's not a lot of cutting for that little bit to do. The second style here is where the idea originally sort of started with these pieces that I thought maybe could almost interlock like puzzle pieces and now I'm doing the same thing where I selected some certain vectors on the inside and cut on the inside lines and then the exterior lines I cut the outside lines again using that 1 16th inch bit so I could really get some detail with it. Now you can see we have these sort of fun shapes that work as coasters, but they actually look more like a traditional sort of snowflake ornament. So after I sort of got this far, I was like, oh, these aren't just coasters. They could be ornaments as well. And then the third style I made is definitely more of a traditional coaster. I did, uh, I used a thicker piece of hardwood and I just V-carved the shapes into the wood so I could then maybe fill them in with colored epoxy or whatnot. And um, I used a quick engraving tool path to experiment with some of the cut 2D uh, cut paths besides just profile, but that's not the right way to do it in the file that you'll be able to download. We actually recreated that properly with a profile tool path and uh, it will work and look better. Let's talk about materials for a minute. Uh, some of you may know that I am what's called an upcyclist or whatever kind of label you want to use, but basically I work with pretty much exclusively reclaimed, upcycled, locally sourced materials. Now, when people say reclaimed, a lot of times they picture, you know, barn wood and things like that, or maybe pallet wood, but there's a lot of other ways to use reclaimed materials out there that are really what attracted me to it in the first place, cheap, <laughs> sometimes free. Um, for example, my latest passion has been hollow core doors. Uh, you can take apart these hollow core doors and you get this eighth inch plywood. And I've made all sorts of stuff using this and these are very easy to find. They get discarded all the time. Uh, a piece of that. This is 
actually a beautiful piece of cherry that was from a cabinet that someone had thrown away. It was on the side of the road. And uh, if you take apart the cabinet somewhat carefully, you can get all sorts of wonderful pieces of wood. Uh, this is a sign misprint on some kind of clear acrylic. It's a, 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 I'm not quite sure exactly what plastic material it is, but it had some lettering on it. And uh, the lettering comes off and you can make all sorts of neat stuff with this. This is from the local sign company. They threw it away because they had misprints on it. And if you ask around and you visit these types of places, there's all sorts of waste from other industries that might become profit for yours. Uh, here is another thing from my sign company friends. This is another sign misprint and this is called a Luma board. You can see it is a plastic core with aluminum sheets on either side. And this is a great scene seeing material um, and you can peel this this particular board has white on one side and the graphics on the other, but if you sand the graphics off, you see you can get down to that aluminum, which is fantastic. So don't think that reclaim just means pallet wood and barn wood. It just means stuff that isn't new, and there's all sorts of neat stuff out there that isn't new that you can use for your projects like this. Sometimes using reclaimed materials translates into a little bit more work, maybe a little more prep work than you're used to, but that is time that you're getting paid for your time rather than spending money at the store. Uh, these particular pieces that I'm using for this job require just a little bit of sanding to get ready. They weren't that big of a deal uh, labor-wise. The Luan plywood from the doors is an eighth inch thick and I wanted to make one set of coasters a quarter inch thick so I just simply glued two pieces together before seeing, seeing them out for that. Since this project is about accessibility and I'm making three versions, I decided to use three different CNC machines in this video. First up is my beloved Avid CNC 2x3 benchtop machine. I did the old CA glue and masking tape trick to stick my Aluma board down to this machine and I cut my first pattern out, which is the circular ones that you saw. Even though there's an aluminum skin on either side of this, it's basically just plastic. So this is a straightforward cut. I used my 1 16th inch router bit for the details, and I just ran it at a pretty quick speed, just like any kind of quick speed you would run for cutting plastic. I switched to an 8th inch end mill to do the cutouts, just to save the wear and tear on my little 16th inch bit. I was very pleased with the looks of these. I liked the white surface with the black around the edges, and um, and then um, if you flip it over, it's silver and black, which also looks cool and holiday-like. Now it's time to move on to the other design, and we're going to use my newest machine and the big heavy hitter, the Avid CNC Pro Series 4x2. This machine's incredible. Um, I use my Starbond CA glue, that's uh, like my favorite brand CA glue to use, uh, to glue it down with the masking tape trick again, and this is my two layers of 8th inch plywood glued together. This time I cut out basically the exact opposite of the last ones I made to create my coasters slash ornaments that have the fun shapes on the outside. And it uh, again worked really well and I was pretty pleased with the results. I cut the entire file using just that 1 16th inch end mill. When I upgraded to my Benchtop Avid CNC, I just thought to myself, wow, CNCing can't be any better than this. And then I upgraded to this Pro Series, and, uh, and I'm saying it again, I don't think CNCing could be any better than this. <laughs> Pretty cool looking for uh, Greg Brady's old closet doors, no? <laughs> okay, for the third one, I'm going to do the V-Carve, and I'm going to use my Maslow CNC, which is sold by MakerMadeCNC.com. Now, this is a $500 introductory machine. It's a 4 foot by 8 foot work area. Your cutting surface is actually a little bit less than that, but this is a super affordable and open source way for people to get into CNCing. Of course, it's not as fast as the Avid CNC, and it doesn't quite do as much, but it does a lot for what it is and for how much it costs. And they sell these really cool V-bits that are 60 degrees on one side and 90 on the other, so I use their V-bit and their $500 machine to make these coasters. I'm cutting them out of the cherry, and um, this is my first pass. I thought it would be cool to make the V-carve kind of really deep into the wood so I could do like a pour in some tinted epoxy and then, and then sand it and then epoxy over and get a bunch of colors. So that's what I'm cutting here. And I'll show you them at the end. Uh, there was a few mistakes because I was poking and prodding at the machine and uh, there were a few parts that were a little too deep. So I ended up not liking it. And then I went and I did it again at a more reasonable V-carve depth of uh, like 0.05 inches, and that came out a lot better. 
The more that I use and experiment with this machine, the better I get at it. It is definitely not the kind of CNC that you can buy and just open the box and get perfect cuts. You need to invest some time and invest some of yourself into it. But the more you invest in it, the more you will get out of it. And um, You'll see that since I ran the V so deep, it kind of bled over to the edges a little bit. So there were some mistakes that I made, and that's why I wasn't too happy with it. Um, so I did it again a little shallower, and it came out a lot better. Sidebar, this sanding block is for my guitar necks, and I have a block of wood underneath it so I can clip it right into my vise there. It comes in handy. And this one is a broken random orbital sanders pad that I put a block of wood on the back of, and that way I can use my random orbit sander pads to do hand sanding too. And a wire brush is a great way to sand out inside of V-carves to get those little loose ends taken care of. I proceeded with my failed attempt at the coasters as well as the new ones I cut out using this tinted Total Boat two-part epoxy. I filled in the grooves. These are the shallower ones that look nicer. Um, and then that's the thicker one where I thought this would be a cool effect and maybe it would be if I tried again, but that's what I ended up with and uh, I didn't really dig it. Another sanding tip, this is just another sanding flat surface I have, just a scrap of plywood with a piece of sandpaper glued onto it. And if you're not sanding against it, it helps hold your work still when you're sanding smaller pieces with that little bit of grip. It's not great, but it helps. My second total boat epoxy pour was just a clear pour over the top, and I'm not a huge fan of epoxy, and I don't have a lot of experience with it, so they didn't come out great, but they're okay. And then for the rest of the stuff, uh, I used my total boat halcyon, which is more of my preferred finish. It is uh, water-based and low VOC. And we can see the final results. The first ones had no sanding at all, really, except for the edge I just cleaned up a little bit, and then there's a protective layer I peeled off the top, and um, I like the look of these a lot. These are definitely the best coasters, and they also make great ornaments. Uh, these are super fun. I think I would like to make these out of the Aluma board as well. I think they would look pretty slick. But if you check out the video on my other channel, you'll see what they look like made out of other materials too. Um, not bad. I like them. And then the coasters, there's that epoxy pour on the deep ones that I wasn't super pleased with. It looks okay, but it's not my favorite, and I didn't even bother cleaning up the edges, as you can see. Um, it's just sort of proof of concept. And then these where I did just the 05 one hundredths of an inch look a lot better and a little more professional. I sanded down the the glossy finish and did like a just a quick coat of Halcyon on top to give it more of a matte finish. Um, so here I, I drilled some holes in a couple of them and hung them from a tree in the backyard behind my shop just so we could see what they look like as ornaments as well. Go ahead and go to Vectric.com and download these files and make your own. Um, if you are a current Vectric user and you have Cut2D or Aspire or VCarve, you can download these and you can edit them and whatnot and just go ahead and make your own versions of them. Or if you are not a user, you can download trial versions of any of those. Cut2D, VCarve, or Aspire. And you can download these files and you can open them up and print them as is. And you can also learn about the software and check it out. And if you are not a CNC user, Go to my channel, youtube.com slash Tim Sway, and you will find more versions of these files that are not CNC driven, uh, and you will be able to make them that way as well. So thank you very much, Vectric, for playing along with me in my sort of mission to curb pointless shopping. <laughs> and uh, I really appreciate it. I appreciate all of you. Um, I will see you on my next In the Labs project here. I'll also see you over on my other channel. And uh, make sure you check out some of the other In the Labs projects from the the heavy hitters of the CNC world here that make the really cool stuff. Um, I've got some cool stuff coming up too. I'm looking forward to continuing to learn and try new things here with you. So thank you very much and I'll, I'll see you in 2020. Well, I'll see you soon on the other channel, but here, I'll see you next year.